This is a supplementary to tutorial for linear algebra. In this supplementary, we'll discuss a glossary of terms which will support chapter 4, the vector space. What is a vector space? A vector space V is a set of non-empty vectors and we call these vectors object or we call these object vectors and this set of vectors have supported by it two operations vector addition means that if v belongs to the big v u and v belongs to the vector space v we can add it and we have to define the addition for every space and scalar multiplication meaning that we can scalar multiply the elements here the word scalar in our course is typically only for the real and the complex view or real or complex numbers now once we have this vector space and these elements in this vector space and these are two operations their operations are subjected to 10 rules and basically we're talking about closure closure means that when we add vectors together it still belongs to that space commutative basically means that u plus v is the same as v plus u the zero element of the vector space uh, belongs to is there uh, basically means that v plus the zero elements remain as v the scalar one is there one times u remains as u the associativity distributivity and the negative of u exists so you can read about the details in lay fifth edition 192 but in closure remember that a vector space is a set of vectors a non-empty set of vectors supported by two operations subjected to 10 rules all right once you have we understand what is a vector space then we talk about a subspace a subspace is a subset of a vector space so for example h is a subset of v and of course being a subset of v then it also behaves with all these operations uh, but we do not need to check these 10 uh, rules all we need to do is to check three different rules that the zero element of uh, the vector which belongs to v must belongs to the subset so the subset must include the zero vector as well as closure and addition vector addition and close under scalar multiplication once it supports these three rules then h is a valid subspace the details can be found in lay fifth edition page 195 once we have figured out subspace and vector space we can now go to the other terminologies which are here so let's introduce the word span span is used in the following manner a vector space spans by the following set of vectors so when we say that what we are saying is that the vector space consists of all linear combinations by the given set of vectors so now we have to figure out what is linear combination and remember linear combination is nothing but saying for example we are given v1 v2 up to vn a linear combination means we are adding these vectors up and we are we can only perform scalar multiplication with the given vectors so this is a linear combination of the set of vectors the given set of vectors okay so we cannot have vn square vn cube cosine vn and so on that's not a linear combination all right now once we have a linear combination we are also interested in another word and another term the other term is called linear independence the word linear independence means that given a set of vector v1 to vn we want to say whether this set of vectors are linearly independent or not and to check for whether this set of vectors v1 to vn are linear independent we only need to check whether the zero vector can be formed by a linear combination of this set and 
if the only way that we can get zero vector is such that alpha 1 to alpha n which is the scalar and this scalar must be all zero and if this is the only way we can get the zero vector then the set of vectors are linearly independent if we can't then they are linearly dependent let me give you an example for example if we have a vector 1 1 1 and then we have another vector 2 2 2 now to get 0 0 0 one possible way is we do minus half times the second vector so this is 1 1 1 minus half times 2 2 2 is minus 1 1 1 which we get 0 so the coefficients associated with this this is alpha 1 for example this is alpha 2 this is v1 and this is v2 you see that in this example there is ways which we can linearly combine this v1 and v2 and get the zero vector without alpha 1 and alpha 2 being zero i mean the other way to obviously see that they are linearly dependent is that the second vector 2 2 2 is nothing but 2 times the first vector all right so we have explained linearly independent and linearly dependent let's proceed we now want to talk about the column space and when we say a column space it is a column of something this is column of a matrix a so if this is a and let's say this matrix is a b c followed by d e f so this is a three by two matrix the column space of a are the possible linear combinations formed by a b c as well as the column d e f basically the column space of a written as c a or if you prefer c o l there's no space a is the set of all linear combination of the columns of a sometimes another word is being used this is called the range of A or the image of A. Okay? Or sometimes we just say the span of the columns of A. So this, all this terminology, span of the columns of A, the range of A, the image of A, the linear combination of the columns of A is the same as the column space of A. Right. What about the row space? Okay? Now, because we do not want to introduce new terminology, the row space of A is the column space of A transpose. So, back to our A, B, C, D, E, F matrix, we have A, D, B, E, C, F. So, this is A transpose. The A is here, all right, on the top. So, now we are interested in the column space of A we're interested oh, sorry we're interested in the column space of a transpose this so these other guys so again it is this is the row space of matrix a transpose okay oh sorry row space of matrix uh, let's be a bit clever if we say the row space of matrix a is the is this and it is the column space of a transpose okay what, that's what I mean. So let's not confuse ourselves. Uh, basically, it means all linear combinations of the rows of A and the span of rows of A. Finally, uh, the very important terminology, the now space of A. So now space is also a vector space. Column space is a vector space. Row space is a vector space. What is the now space of A? Well, let's define A it's an M by N matrix the now space of A is the set when we talk about a space we are talking about a set of vectors so these vectors let's call them X and it belongs to Rn the reason why it's Rn is because it must match the number of columns of A because it will be A times X so the size must match so if this is M by N this guy must be N by 1 so it is the elements of x, which is Rn space, such that Ax equals to 0. So this is the condition for the now space. It is a set of vectors x that satisfies this. 
All right, this is very interesting because it means it is the solution of the homogeneous equation. Ax equals to zero. Right, sometimes we call this the kernel of A. All right, so there are all these names, the set of homogeneous solution, the kernel, the noun space, all mean the same thing. Okay, so let's proceed to the next terminology, which are basis and so on. So the word basis is used to describe a property of a vector space or the basis of a vector space. What is the basis of a vector space? Uh, it's not a property, sorry, I should say. Basis is describing something about the vector space. It is the set of linearly independent vectors. So we must not have dependent vectors. We only have need to have linearly independent vectors. And we talk about the basis of a vector space. So this set of linearly independent vectors must span this space. Okay, it's not any arbitrary set. It is some set of linearly independent vectors. Now, because we can have many sets of linearly independent vector sets span a space, it is not unique. I'll give you an example. For example, 1, 0, 0, 1 is the standard basis for R2. So is 1, 1, 0, 1. So is 1, minus 1, minus 1, 0 and so on. All this set of columns can span R2. So as long as these columns are linearly independent and they span a space, they are basis of that space. Once we have the basis, we are very interested to count how many elements are there in the basis. And the word is called the dimension of the vector space. So the dimension of the vector space, dim of B, the dimension of V is the cardinality, meaning the number of vectors in that basis. So for R2, of course, the dimension is 2. R3, the dimension is 3. But if in the subspace, then we have to count the number of vectors in that basis. Right. Let's get to rank nullity. If we are, we are interested in rank nullity with respect to a matrix, okay? So uh, we're not talking about linear transformation here. We are talking about for a matrix. Uh, it is, uh, let's have a matrix n by n. So the nullity of the matrix A is the dimension of the null space of A. Okay, so it's the dimension of how many vectors in the basis for the null space of A. Now, now the T of A is here, N, the number of columns is here, the rank of A plus the nullity of A equals to the number of columns. That is the rank nullity theorem. So what is rank now? So if you if this is not uh, known to you, a rank of a matrix is the number of independent rows or columns. You'll be very interested to know that even if the matrix is rectangle, for example, M by N, the number of independent row and columns are the same. And that's a very cool fact. Okay. Now, that's the rank of A. Sometimes you'll hear the word full rank. Full rank means the number, the row rank or the column rank is as high as possible. So, for example, if you are given a matrix M by N, for example, 3 by 2, so I'll try to give you a 3 by 2 matrix. 1, 1, 1. This is a 3. Let's see, 2, 2, 2. So this is a 3 by 2 matrix. Now, it has 3 rows and 2 columns. The rank is only 1 because there is only 1 independent row or 1 independent column. You can see the independent column very obviously because this guy is this guy. Uh, times 2. Oh, sorry, the second column is 2 times the first column. What about if you observe it as this way, then in fact all the rows are the same. So the number the number of independent rows is 1, the number of independent columns is 1. The rank of this matrix is also 1. 
Is this matrix full rank? No, because the rank is the row rank is one, the column rank is one. It is not as high as possible. As high as possible is two, because we can either get three or two. The max, the 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 best of course is we'll get is rank two, but we are not. So this matrix is not full rank. Not full rank. All right. Okay. So finally. We are in the last terminology. If we have a, a, a linear transformation T or that is going to work on X, the input, uh, any linear transformation can be represented as a matrix. So A is a matrix representing the linear transformation. Uh, X is transformed to Y through this uh, linear transformation. So sometimes we will also describe T on the left of a colon. So the colon stands for such that T is a transformation such that it takes an element of an input space V and then sends it to uh, an element W, an uh, element of W. So V is called the domain of T, the input space. W is the co-domain of T, the output space. All right. So these are the terminology of domain, co-domain. And what about kernel? The kernel of T is the now space of A. Okay, it is the set of element X, the input, such that the output becomes the zero element. Alright, what about the range of T? The range of T is the range of the linear transformation, it is the set of the output y, which belongs to w, for all x belonging to the input space. Okay, that's the range of t. So it is the column space of A. And with that, we end our, our quick overview of all these terms. Thank you.